Okay. Uh, hi, Ryan. Uh, this is your Uncle Mike. I've seen your uh, video that you did here a while back on uh, your uh, alcohol burner that you made for your bug out kit. I was going to show you what we used to do or use uh, a long time ago when we used to go to goose hunting with your uncle or with your uh, grandpa Klug is uh, we used to take a one gallon coffee can, this is a half a gallon, but we used to take the one gallon coffee can you would leave the bottom in it and you wouldn't put these big holes in it, you would just take a, a regular church key like this here and then punch holes around the outside on the side of it, not on the bottom but on the side and then uh, the bottom would still be in there you would wrap it with uh, electrical tape and then fill it up full of uh, Kingsford uh, briquettes, the, the uh, match light type where you don't have to use the, the fluid. Snap your lid back on it and you can put it in your backpack or behind your seat of your truck or whatever until you get out to your goose blind or if you're going to go out steelhead fishing along the shoreline above Ice Harbor Dam you can't have uh, open flames, you have to have them contained so inside of a coffee can was considered contained fire then and so you could have this out here to keep you nice and warm. Well we were out there me and your grandpa were out uh, sitting on the side of the shoreline uh, keeping ourselves nice and warm with our coffee cans and your uncle or uh, my uncle George uh, Lambert uh, he was out there with his camper and he he seen what we had going on he goes back inside of his camper and uh, he grabs the uh, the thing off of his stove the grate I guess you call him he slaps that grate on top of our coffee can put a, a pot of coffee on there and he made coffee for everybody that was standing around out there. I didn't realize they would fit on there, but uh, apparently they fit onto coffee cans. And he said a six-inch uh, stove pipe they'll fit on top of too. How he found that out, I don't know. But uh, anyway, uh, that's what uh, we used to use for a long time, just as a uh, you know, kind of a an emergency kit, you know, for uh, storms or whatever. And uh, you know, if you want to heat up coffee while you're out there fishing or chocolate, hot chocolate or whatever. Uh, you can also use it for your uh, your alcohol burners. Uh, they work pretty good. You can you know light up a, an alcohol burner. That'll take a second here to get going. Another thing I was going to show you too is that I've got a various you know a bunch of these alcohol burners. And about 40 years ago, I came across this over. I think Griggs had it. It's uh, made by Sterno, and it's designed for your cans of Sterno. It fits right inside here, and. Uh, you can take the top off of that and, and uh, light them up and they work pretty good. You can also use it for your alcohol stoves. Uh, a cat food can, or uh, no, a tuna, tuna fish can is the same size as a can of Sterno. And so you can slap that in there, put an alcohol burner in it, and it works too. It makes a nice little stove and it's, uh, it'll actually fold up so it's only about, oh, probably about that thick. Which, uh, you know, maybe half an inch to three quarters of an inch. But the, some of these alcohol burners that uh, I have been shown how to make in the past, this was the first one. It's a, they call it a penny uh, burner, and uh, I had I didn't have a penny, so I use a nickel. But uh, the reason I don't like it, it's it's a single wall uh, construction, so you got to have a priming pan. You got to put a little bit of alcohol down inside here and get it to prime, and then it'll start up. It takes the uh, very short time to to get lit and uh, it'll light up and, and start working but you still have to have that darn priming pan which I don't care for. Uh, the other styles that I've got are these double wall constructions. It's just another you know you take a band of uh, your tin can off of another can or off the top or whatever and uh, on one end of it you cut a tab and put a slot in it, fold it through wrap it in there and it just fits up inside of this thing here um, you can use uh, JB Weld and glue it in if you want to, it doesn't need it because it, once you press it down if you cut your, your uh, cuts pretty good then it's it's going to seal. If, it, if you're worried about your cut not being square then go ahead and, and uh, put some JB Weld on it. Yeah, This is the other frustrating thing, sometimes it'll light sometimes it takes a little bit But the reason I like these double wall constructions, there she lights. Okay, now it'll take a while here because I still got all that fluid down in the bottom of the pan. So once that burns off, this will settle back down again. 
but uh, the double wall constructions and here's another double wall construction this one here uh, you use a full can you're just cutting the bottom out like this here and except you're cutting the bottom out you know back here a ways you know on the outside and then it's got the ribs or slices down there so that the fluid will come up around the back side and get up in up in this uh, there's a little gap up here behind this and so it'll light that way uh, and it works pretty good too uh, not as as well as uh, say the uh, this one over here but it does still work another uh, design of that is and this is the best design that I found so far is this one here and you've, you've got ribs inside your can I don't know if you can see inside that can there but there's you got bit uh, ribs inside there and the fluid comes up around the back side and uh, then you put your, your lid on upside down here and just crimp it over so you don't have to glue it at all uh, you can if you want and I've got a little bit of glue on, on mine just to make sure it's sealed and uh, that one there works pretty good this one here's another one that works pretty pretty well it's a double wall construction here and uh, I just cut it out and fit the thing inside there and then glued it with JB well so it doesn't look so so good but it still works and the reason I like these style is you pour your fluid right in the top hit it with a lighter they light up now this one over here takes a little bit of longer to to light up because it's got such a small hole that you have to hit it every once in a while two or three times to get it to, to stay lit until she primes but the nice thing about these here this one and this one is they're a tornado style they don't blow out the outside like this here they blow on the inside if I get it to stay lit, I'll show you what I'm talking about here. Once it's, it's lit, it usually will, doesn't take very long at all to, uh, to get going here. Okay, now that one's going. This one here, not quite yet. That one takes a little bit longer to get going because it's so big. It's got a bigger opening in the in the front of it, on the face of it. Yeah, that one there is going to take a little while to get going too. It looks like build up some pressure. But this one here. Like I said, is about the best that I've come across so far, or that I've, that I've made so far. This one here works pretty good once it gets going, but it's, uh, yeah, it takes a little bit to get going. These over here, this one, this one, and this one, even the one back there, they work fantastic for what they are, but uh, I don't like them as much as I like, say, this one over here. The reason I like this one is, uh, let's see here. Let's uh, snuff a few of these out. So uh, try to get around here so I don't have to get burnt. We'll snuff that one there out. Oops. Okay, I guess I'm going to have to leave that on there for a second. Okay, that one's snuffed. This snuff is captured. The penny one. Okay, that one's snuffed. Let's snuff this one here. Alright. Now we got those snuffed there and they're kind of out of the way. I don't know if you can see how that spiral nut there is coming out at an angle. Let me shut the light off here and see if that helps out. Okay, uh, it comes out as an angle here. Matter of fact, let me take the camera off of this tripod and flip this around here so that, okay now you can see how it's uh, spiraling around there now when there spirals around well, this one here is just your standard old flame there now in there actually I've got uh, I, when I drilled it I drilled it with uh, you know different size drill bits so you got large small large small you know so you got your flames that are Kind of staggered there a little bit, but this one here, I love the way it burns. Burns great. Uh, it, it will uh, boil, you know, within 
five to six and a half minutes, it'll boil two cups of or two cups of water. Okay, let me see if I can get you a step back down here. All right. The reason I like okay, we're gonna stuff this one here too. Slide that one back. The reason I like these here is because these you've got simmer rings that you can stick over the top of them. And once this here cools off and burns off the excess uh, gases, it will draw the flame down. So you, can, you know, once you've got your, say you're doing this, uh, some rice or or something that needs to boil first, and then you need to simmer it for a long period of time. Well, to uh, to simmer it with a higher uh, flame like that, you just can't do it. You gotta, you know, lift your pot way off to the side or up, up you know, off of the flame. Where if you throw a simmer ring on there like this here, your flame now drops down to a little bit. It'll even drop further on this one here once it settles down. There she goes. It's starting to drop down now. And that gives you a, a simmering flame. So you can set it on there and, and it'll simmer for, you know, say 15 minutes or whatever it takes for rice to get done. And you're not going to burn your rice. But if you needed a, a hot flame to get it boiling, Pull that off of there. Oops. Pull that off. And it takes no time at all, and she's going to start uh, swirling up there again. But the, the way you get these, uh, the flame to swirl like this is you, when you drill your holes, drill it straight in, and then on the back side of the hole, dab a little JB weld on there over the top of each of the holes. Let the holes, uh, or let the JB weld set up. Then come back and drill them again with uh, at an angle, and that, when you drill it with an, at an angle like that, the JB weld gives you enough area that it forces it through and gets it to, to spiral like that. It, uh, you know, if you're just drilling it through the tin can, you don't have enough surface area there to to make a difference. It's not going to you know you're not going to get it to come out at an angle. So you're going to have to dab a little JB weld on there and make a jet out of it. Put the simmer rings back on there and it'll settle them back down. And now I tried to put the simmer ring on these type, uh, you know, these type that come out the sides here on the outside, and uh, it doesn't work. Um, it has to be the type that burns, you know, from the inside like that. Uh, those tend to to work very well. You can put the simmer ring on there, and it'll settle it, the flame down, and it'll burn. You put it on the on these type, slap that, that simmer ring on there, and it just blows the gases out the around the bottom side, and you end up with a mess. It just uh, you'll end up melting your ring is what you end up doing. But anyway, these were uh, a, f a few of the ones that I've got, and uh, I thought I'd show you what I've got, and and uh, maybe you can use some of them too. But uh, anyway. Uh, also, I wanted to show you the uh, <laughs> the trick here with this uh, this grate over the top of this can. I, I had no idea you could use it like that, but it does work very nice. So, if you know somebody with an old camper is getting rid of it, or you go to a uh, camping store, you can pick one up. I'm sure and, uh, makes a, makes for a nice little stove. So, talk to you later. Bye.